In this video, I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about scopes in DaVinci Resolve. These are foundational level tools that everybody color grading footage should know about and know how to use. Understanding how to use and read scopes is the key difference between a hobbyist and a professional. It's the way to be able to make sure that you can achieve really good looking results every single time and remove the guessing game. So in the next couple of minutes, you are going to learn about the different scopes available to you in DaVinci Resolve, how to set them up, how to read them, and then how to use them to be able to study images and how to practically use them to get the most out of your image. Here we are in DaVinci Resolve, and I just have one clip open of this lady opening the curtains. And here are our scopes. So if you can't see your scopes, all you need to do is click on this icon over here and your scopes will come up. So what are scopes? Essentially scopes are just measurement devices. And so if I go to the beginning of this clip, as I play it back, you can see she opens the curtains, all of a sudden there's a lot more image data. So if I come to our vector scope, which is a different scope, and I go right to the beginning again, you can see there's just one spot and as she opens up those curtains, the image data changes. So that's exactly what a scope is. It is pretty much just a representation of the image data in our image. But you may be asking, why would you even need something like this? Well, as you are going, your eyes are adjusting to your image. Think about when you go from a dark room to a light room, your eyes adjust to that. So to demonstrate this even further, what I want you to do is look at the center of this red screen. For about 30 seconds, keep your eyes in the center of the screen and as you do this, your eyes are going to adjust to the red tones and then when I switch to a white screen, you are actually going to perceive it as being more on the teal spectrum. And this is because your eyes are adjusting to this red screen and then compensating. And so you're going to be seeing the opposite of red, which is going to be more in the teal blue spectrum. So right now, you're looking at a white image not a cyan image, but your brain has compensated for the red in the previous image to make sure that your eyes are adjusting. So now when we switch to this balanced image, your brain is actually not going to be able to interpret these colors correctly. But when you're able to have an unbiased reference point, which is what scopes are, you're able to make better decisions and you'll be able to make decisions over a long period of time that are the correct decisions. So that's why we use scopes. It helps us to have a really good reference point as we're going so that we can have consistency in our color grade. It's also great to be able to look at our scopes and then make good decisions based off of the information that we have, rather than just looking at our image and guessing and hoping that it looks good. So for instance, right over here, we can say that this is quite a bright image, but if we look at our parade, it's actually not that bright. How can I tell this though? So now we actually need to talk about the anatomy of a scope. So it pretty much works just like a waveform or a histogram, which is something that people might be more used to. So in a scope, which we're gonna work in a parade for now, this is pretty much our highlights region, these are mid-tones region, and these are shadows region. So as you can tell, it goes from top to bottom, and that's how we read our scopes. So I can tell that our highlights, which are up here on our scope, are not all the way at the top line, which is pretty much where our highlights are gonna be clipping, which tells me that there's actually not a lot of contrast in this image, because even though our shadows are touching that bottom zero line, our top line, which is our highlights, is not touching the top of our highlights region. So if I were to bring those highlights all the way up, you could tell that now there's a lot of contrast in our image and now we have just read our scope and made a decision. But that's besides the point. What I'm trying to get at is that it's important to be able to read the information in your scopes and be able to correlate that information with what's in your image. It sounds more complicated than it is. All I'm saying is that it's really good to be able to look and go, okay, these are the darkest parts of my image and that's where they are in the scopes. I think there might be more information. Let's pull up like that. Okay, cool. So now you know what scopes are and why we would use them. Let's actually discuss a couple of these more in depth. But first I want to show you how you can have access to more of the scopes here in DaVinci Resolve. So if you are not so familiar, all you have to do is click on the name over here and you will see that we now have a menu of different scopes. So our parade is what we've been looking at right here. We then have waveform, which is this, and vector scope. And then we have our histogram and our chromaticity, 
Right, so that's just a quick walkthrough, but I'm actually only gonna focus on two of these scopes because these are the scopes that I work with the most and I think are the most important to work with. So why would we use the parade? Well, the parade is quite unique. As you can tell that we can look at our exposure, which is what we spoke about earlier, and we can also see our color balance. But how can we see our color balance? Well, we've got red, green, and blue, and these are our color channels. So this is the red color channel. So as I pull that down, you can see we have no red and then obviously the same with the rest so we can see each individual color channel just here on one scope and that's quite a helpful tool because if I wanted to balance this image I could just look at my scopes and see that they're quite uneven here so the red is quite a lot higher than the blue and the green is around in the middle of the two. So that's not a big deal, but it does tell me that this shot is slightly out of balance. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pull up my blue like this, and then I'm gonna pull up my green, slightly pull back down on the blue, and now I'm going to show you what it looked like before. So this is before and this is after. Not a huge difference, but it is quite a big difference in terms of her skin tone. His skin is looking a lot more clean and probably a lot more natural than it was before. It was quite warm. I'm just using this as an example. I'm not saying that this is the perfect balance for this shot, but you can see how we've used the parade to be able to get a good white balance just by looking at one scope instead of having to switch around. So I could stay on the scope and be able to adjust my exposure as well. I'm gonna pull up so that I get more detail in the shadows and her hair up here. So I'm just gonna zoom in here and show you. If I were to pull up here, you will be able to see that there's actually quite a lot more detail here in her hair than we thought. And I could tell that because I could see that the shadows were actually squashed. So as I pull that exposure up, you can actually see everything stretch and decompress and we can see there's more information in the shadows. So that's why the parade is so powerful because we can make a bunch of different kinds of adjustments just looking at one scope rather than having to jump through a bunch. Because you can see exposure and color balance all in one, it's really helpful. So how would we set the scope up to get the most out of it? Well, if you look at your scope just next to its name, there is this little settings icon. If you click on that, we now have a bunch of settings that we can look at. So we have different viewing options at the top here. If you click YRGB, you're now seeing YRGB, which is obviously luminance, red, green and blue. So this is also really helpful if you want to track what your luminance is doing, but essentially red, green and blue all together is making your luminance anyway, right? I tend to keep that off, keep my parade kind of bright somewhere around there. And that's all I do for the parade. Before we carry on, I just want to take a moment to talk about this video's sponsor, which is audio.com. Audio.com is a music licensing platform that offers high quality sound effects and music. Before you skip forward though, just hear me out. This platform has incredible AI features that make your life so much easier and you don't have to pay a premium to have access to them. In my personal experience, it can take hours to find the right kind of music, but with features like Hunts AI and Linkmatch AI, those hours turn into minutes. All you have to do is type literally anything into Hunts AI or paste the link to a reference song in Linkmatch AI AI, and they will suggest relevant songs to your searches. Now these AI features are limited to their pro license, but here's how you can get 70% off of your first year of a pro license with audio. Just use coupon code HUNT at checkout and you'll be able to have access to sound effects, music, all of the AI features, as well as individual stems of your music so that you can have full control of your sound and your project. So if you want to check it out, hit the link in the description and don't forget to use coupon code HUNT. Before we speak about the vector scope, I just wanna show you something that's really, really helpful. So if you wanna be able to put your mouse over your image like this and see those red, green, and blue circles, I'm gonna show you how to do that. So if you go right to the corner of the scopes panel, you'll see this little ellipsis. If you click on that, you can turn on display qualifier focus. When you do that and you switch to the qualifier tool, you'll be able to see in your scopes exactly what your qualifier is hovering over. This is really helpful when you're trying to get a perfect white balance or when you're trying to reference something in your image and see where it is in your scope. So for instance, if I wanna see where the darkest part of my image is, I would just hover over it and then look at the scope and I'd be able to tell, okay, here's a dark, part of my image. Here's probably the darkest and we've got some more in her mouth there. It's really dark. You're able to actually track your image and study your image more because you can reference where it is in the actual scope. 
really helpful tool. It's also really helpful when you are trying to study some other images. So for instance, if I were to pull up a still of a movie like this one over here, we can now do the exact same thing and study this image. We can study the color, we can study the look, we can study the exposure, and we can get a good idea of how they graded this. So let me show you how we can do something like that. So if I hover over the highlights in the skin there, we can see the balance of the skin tone and the balance of the highlights by looking at the red, green, and blue channels. You can see that there's obviously a lot more warmth there because it is a skin tone but it's not that crazy and then if we go into the shadows the shadows are actually quite balanced the red green and blue channel are looking quite balanced together which gives it this refined look it doesn't have this insane stylized feel but there is a bit of coolness over here in the midtones and you can tell again by looking at your parade and seeing that the blue channel is a little bit higher so let's find a different image so now we can do the same thing make sure your qualifier is on and you can see exactly how warm this image is and you can try and replicate something like that another great way is looking at your vector scope we can see exactly where that warm tone is going so scopes are not only great for color grading your own imagery but also for being able to study other people's imagery so that you can break down their grades and you can try and achieve something similar so moving over to the vector scope we're going to click over here and first I'm going to show you how to set it up. So again, click on your settings right over here and we have quite a few more settings that we can work with here. Up here we have all low, mid, high. What's really helpful about this is that we can see all of the tonal regions in our scope. We can see just the lower tonal region of our scope. We can see the mid tones and we can see the highlights, but we can really isolate all of them and just see them one at a time. This is really great for when you want to be making isolated adjustments and you just wanna see them individually. I usually keep it on all. So we also have extents here and something called combine. I usually leave those off. Also usually keep my vector scope dimmer somewhere around here so I can see a little bit more of the color in the actual information. And then the gradical I just leave in the middle. Low range, uh, I also just leave as it was somewhere around here. Two time zoom, make sure this is always off unless you're turning it on for something like I just did now to show you something. Turn on show skin tone indicator. And essentially that is just this little line, which is a good reference point for where our skin should be sitting in our image. So that's really helpful. Just helps you get natural looking skin tones and white balance your image a lot easier. And then show graticle is also always on. So now that you've set up your vector scope, Let's talk a little bit more about it. So the vector scope is split into four quadrants. This being the red and yellow quadrant, this being the green quadrant, this being the blue and cyan quadrant, and this being the magenta quadrant. It's really important to be able to understand that. And a good way to be able to do that is to just look at your color wheel because it's exactly the same. So as you can tell, yes, there's red here, but there's also oranges and yellows also go sort of into this quadrant here. Then we've got greens and then we've got the cyan, which sits somewhere here. And then we've got, you know, our blues somewhere here and you know so forth so if you want to look at your color wheel to get a better understanding they pretty much correlate exactly but why do we need to know this well it's important because if we are trying to go for a specific look or if we're trying to get a color to look very specific so for instance if we wanted a skin tone to look more purple we could do that and get an exact match to what we we're referencing or maybe the shot before so now when we make an adjustment to that hue we can actually have an accurate representation of what's happening to that hue value and we can make a decision on where we want it to go and we can replicate the decision in the future so i'm just going to reset what we did earlier and i'm going to show you how we can use our vector scope to be able to get a good balance in this image so i'm just going to show two time zoom again so that you can see and I like to work in my HDR palette which is in another video that I have just made so have a look at that and then I'm going to use my XY coordinates to get a better balance so let me get my qualifier and I can see where a skin tone is setting and I can see where the white in a shirt is sitting essentially I kind of want to get this white to be more white and sit over the center of those four quadrants so I'm going to cool it down somewhere around here let's have a look that's looking pretty good maybe a little bit too cool somewhere there and then i'm going to put a little bit more green into the image 
I'm looking at a skin tone here, which is a little bit too magenta. Let's see. Before and after. Before and after. So we can actually use this to be able to see where our skin tone is sitting, where the saturation is, so, uh, you know, where it's most saturated in the image as well. And then we can also look at where our whites are so that we can get a better balance in our image. Being able to use these in correlation with each other, it's really helpful to be able to get a quick and better balance, but making sure that your eyes are not biased to the adjustments that you're making. Another good reason why we need to understand our scopes is because there are certain I guess, rules of thumbs that we can look at. Uh, one being, don't ever let your information go below zero or go above one, zero, two, three. And that is pretty much just a standard if you're not wanting to clip the information in your image. However, there are exceptions. If you are going to color grade an image and it's part of what you're doing, which is having this really, really bright sky and you really don't care about the information up there, then go for it. If it means that that's what your look looks like, then do it. Don't let that confine you. Where you want to make sure that you aren't doing these things is when you're not paying attention to your scope and it's not a decision that you're actually making. It's just, does this look good or doesn't it? And that's something you don't want to do. Another good rule is that skin tones generally like to sit over here, 640. These are IRE numbers and they correlate to exposure and it's really good to understand those. You can definitely give that a Google if you want to know more. But our skin tones generally should be sitting between these three lines here. And again, obviously this depends on the kind of look that you're going for. If it's a darker image, don't be afraid to break this rule. There are some other rules that you can try and keep to, but I think the first rule is the most important, which is just make sure that you're looking at your image and your scopes and you're not clipping any of your shadows and you're not clipping any of your highlights. The last rule that I'm gonna mention applies to saturation. So if we change our parade to vector scope, and I'll tell you why in a bit, let me go to a clip that has a little bit more saturation like this one over here. You can tell that our saturation isn't huge in the shot because of how far the information extends from the center. So as I up the saturation, you can see that the information extends outwards from the center. But why am I telling you all of this? Well, if you look at the scope, you can see these little square markers over here. And those are pretty much our standard points where our saturation is gonna be going out of bounds. So if you could imagine a little circle around these little squares, try not to let your saturation go out of bounds. So often if you're working with an image that has a fire hydrant or some kind of red, the red is gonna shoot up. You want to make sure that you're bringing that back so that it comes into broadcast spec, which is what yeah, broadcast specifications is pretty much. If your saturation goes too far, then it's going to start clipping when it's played on other devices. So if you enjoyed this video and you learned a lot and you wanna know more, hit the subscribe button. There's a bunch more videos coming. And if you have any questions, just leave them in the comment section. I try to get to every question that I can and I'll see you in the next one.